Hello there and welcome. I'm Peggy. And oh, we have good recipes, good food to share with you. Thanks to my guest, Rhonda Matthews from Clemson University. And we have Clemson to thank too for you. Thanks Thank so much. you for coming, and it's good to see you again. Oh, I always love being here with you. We have a good time. Now always, you, always. You brought food today. What do you What do you call this? Old fashioned country it is, food. It is. It's well, all those foods that are tied to those traditions and all those memories that everybody grew up with, or at least the folks around us. But if I had to guess, I would say everybody everywhere. everywhere. These are very familiar to you. So, and if they're not familiar. <laughs> For your well, sake, I hope you make them familiar pretty oh, soon because they're sure is, good eating. So, oh boy, she um, has uh, mixed greens. Right, and now, it's you, not just the plain old greens. We're going to do um, some rainbow chard, and chard is delicious by itself. But when you see this rainbow chard, uh, mm. it's it is really a beautiful thing. And isn't it true that the darker the color That's of correct. the greens, right. the more nutritional value That's it right. has. The more intensely colored yeah. that food is. Yeah. So get out the, the kale and all, it's the perfect time of year for it. Absolutely. All that's in season right now. And two of the dishes we'll be making today are in season. So if you're growing your own garden, you okay. know that already. Okay. Or if you're hitting those farmer's markets, these are the ones to look for. And then this is the way you can save money. Absolutely. Yeah. And increase that nutritional value of what's on your plate for okay. you and your family. So what are you going to do first? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some beets. So we're going to bake them or roast them. Oh my. I love beets. So I'll, I. I'll eat them any way you put them on my plate. Just out of a can is fine with me. But right here, yeah, these fresh beautiful. beets in season, mm. oh boy, mm. you really, really cannot beat them. You can't beat the beets. So. <laughs> Uh, but these I have uh, pre-washed uh, and uh, I scrubbed them really well, despite what they look like. They, but they are really a that's really a beautiful vegetable. What we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to manhandle them just a little, and we're going to go ahead and take off that stem. Now, if you like beet greens, and a lot of folks do, you can save these. We're not going to save them today. We've got. We've got to get on with our program, but we're okay. gonna go ahead and lay those to the side. And what we're gonna do with these beets that are nice and clean, we're gonna take off the top, because that's essentially inedible. And then we're gonna take off the root, and we'll get these cleaned up nicely. So there's one, look at that beautiful color. Oh, I love it. I know. And so then we'll take the top of that one, top of that one. Now I'll go ahead and warn you, you want to have a very sharp knife to do this with, and that ain't no joke. These things are not a soft vegetable. They're fairly hard, so don't be hacking on them with a dull okay. knife. That's a real good way to cut your hand. So we're going to cut these into medium-sized chunks like that. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull our big roasting pot around, no, and we're going to go ahead and sit peel that over. I didn't. They're actually, believe it or not, easier to take the peel off after they've roasted a little right. bit. So if you'll just work with them a little that bit. That makes sense. Yeah, if you'll take a little uh, fork or something along those lines, and we're going to take that root top off right there, or that stem top off. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And you can just take a, once they're roasted, you can just, that skin actually will just slip You're away. You're right, that is a wonderful color. Isn't it beautiful? And so we'll just cut these into nice fat chunks. And in they go. Now, we're going to add the yum yum on top. So what we're going to do is we've got a pat of butter, about a tablespoon, and in that's going to go. And that's going to give it just a little bit of fat in the bottom and give a little bit of seasoning to it. So in that goes. The next thing we're going to add in is a can of mandarin oranges, oh. juice and all. Give them just, just a, dump it all in there. That's right, right over the top, right on the top. And then, last thing we're going to add to the top is about, about, and you know it's hard for me to measure anything specifically I well, when I cook. You know what? Good cooks they don't usually <laughs> measure. Just a well, little bit of this, a little bit. You of know, that. when folks write in and get that 
pamphlet exact. that we've got. I've got the measurements in there. It's a tablespoon, a tablespoon of, of brown, brown sugar. sugar and a tablespoon of butter. But that's, that you know, about right. that's about a tablespoon. <laughs> and we're going to sprinkle that over the top. Now between those, you read my mind, between those oranges and those that butter and that brown sugar. Oh. It's gonna give enough of a sweetness and then the natural sugars in the beets, after they've cooked, that will caramelize as well and that's gonna come off just absolutely nice. And you just want a good heavy roasting pan. That's right. Now you can do it in a baking dish if you want, but if you use a baking dish, make sure you cover it very tightly. The other thing you can do, and a lot of folks do their beets this way, is they'll use heavy-duty aluminum foil, and they'll just use a square piece of aluminum foil, and one beet at a time, they'll wrap oh, that beet up very, yeah. very tight in that aluminum foil. But I love and, this. Yep, and you can, but you can do them all this way. Mm -hmm. And then you just put that in the oven? That's right, about 400, 425 degrees. Let them go for an hour. And that, now, at 45 minutes, they'll be tender, ready to okay. eat. If you let them go 15, 20, 30 minutes longer, that's when you start getting into that natural sugars, caramelizing, and you get into that territory of going from mm-mm to oh my. So okay. they get right. really, well, really good. Than that, and it's good yeah, for Yeah, it is. So we're going to well, sit this over right. here and um, and pull out the other ones now and take a look. Baked beets, and I couldn't think of anything easier to do. That's and right. It, it's a little bit different, even though she says it's food we all grew up with. It's a tiny bit different. I love the oranges. Yeah. So I've got this one ready. So we'll swap out our cutting board and our knife and put them back here. Be careful. We'll take our lid Ooh. off. There they are, there. done. Oh, how nice. So you can see. That's beautiful. They're very, very tender. There we go. Okay. Mm. And you can see all that goody down in the bottom. Now, that skin will just this absolutely right peel off. away. There's nothing to it. It's actually really tender. And a lot of folks don't mind just leaving that skin on, and there you go. That's done. So, what we're going to do is we'll just give these a stir. Well, that's so that ready to coated. serve. It is. So these are one of those, put it in the oven. Oh, and forget it. Oh. Let it do its thing. And then when it's time to get it on the table, pull it out of the oven. So That's and, beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice. That glaze comes up really pretty on it. And you can tell they go from that really bright red to that deep burgundy color. So if I can ask you a favor, if you'll get our plate down there, we'll right. go ahead and get this on the plate. Here we go. Okay. All right. Now, if you happen to have leftovers with this. I doubt you yeah, have any. I have to agree. This is really a yummy thing. Um, this is, you don't have a lot of sweet vegetables. Now, we're going to hang on to that. Right. We'll sit it I'll over to the it side because right we'll keep on adding to that to make our meal complete. All right. But, um, if you happen to have leftovers, you can turn that into a salad. So easy. Cold, you chop that up mm. even finer, add just the tiniest dab of mayo, a little bit of crumbled cheese or grated cheese, and you're ready to add that onto a top of or onto the a bed of greens of any kind, and that's lunch. Okay, baked beets. I couldn't think of any. They're beautiful. They are. Very nice. So that one's ready to go. Now what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm curious to see what she's going to bring. We're, um, we're going to do an old southern home style favorite that's just been around forever. And I think everybody makes these just a little bit different. We were actually talking, about, and I can smell them now that I've taken the top off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, uh, we're going to do some salmon patties. Some folks call them salmon right. croquettes, fish cakes. Um, there's lots of different names for them. You can do this with tuna. You can do this with salmon. You can do this with mackerel. The bigger cans like this are going to be the least expensive, and the pink is going to be the least expensive. If you buy yeah, the red, it's going to cost more. A little bit more expensive, a yeah. little bit healthier in terms of the types of fats that are in it. But if you're looking for nutrition, still plenty of good nutrition here and easy on the pocketbook. You can easily feed a family of four with that can. 
So when you open that can up, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about what you're going to find inside. You're going to find basically where they've just bas taken fish off the, or, uh, off the big bone or cut it into pieces a lot of times and put it in the can and canned it. If you find these... You want to get those little nodules Well, let's there. talk about that for a second. If you find these bones like this, the vertebra, a lot of folks don't mind leaving these in. If you realize uh, that they will just absolutely disintegrate if you rub them between your fingers. Some folks that want the extra calcium in their diet do not mind at all if yeah. they have that extra calcium in their diet. So they'll keep that in. Um, the finer bones, like this right here, I actually leave in. And by the time you've got everything mixed up, you never know that that's there. So we're going to just basically take the skin off this. Some folks actually leave the skin on, too. And I, as a rule at my house, I think everybody's probably got their own rule at their own house, shouldn't we? We should all have our own rule at our own house. Um, they kind of live by the way they want to. So this is all good. I would, I would put all that in the bowl at my house. All right. And I would take you that big take that middle out. out. Yeah. That's what I would do. But That's like the backbone. That's what it <laughs> there is. There it is. See. And it'll all come out in one fell swoop just like that. Mm-hmm and you can drop it to the side. There we go, and it's gone. All right, we're almost ready to start mixing it up. I don't think there's much left in here that's not just good. There we go. All right. All right, now, let me see if I see anything else in there I'm not a friend of. Mm, I think that's about it. I'm gonna drain off just a little bit of that extra juice, and in this all goes. Whoops. Okay. Now, I've had folks ask me about this several times. They say, how do you make your salmon patties? I think every mom in the world has her own family recipe for doing salmon patties. You can add crackers or crumbled biscuit or toasted leftover bread. That's all standard. Everybody okay. does it a little different. Now you're adding two eggs to that, right? Two eggs, just a little bit beaten okay. up. And I'm gonna add yeah. cornmeal. Okay, here so we go. I'm going to steal that from you, about a quarter cup, and what it comes down to is enough to hold it all together and make a patty. That's what we're really looking for. That's all you for. do. Yeah, and then what we're going to do is, now if I was at the house, I'd have my hands in this. Well, you can do that. <laughs> we're going to see how this fork will so work. So that's two eggs and one can of salmon and... Uh, and enough cornmeal to hold cornmeal. it together, that's yeah. right. And if it looks a little bit wet, add a little more cornmeal. You just have to play with it a little bit until the right. consistency is, is right. That's and then right. what do you do? What are you going to well, do with it? Well, another thing, the other things that folks like to add into this is sometimes they'll chop a little bit of onion and put in this, sometimes even a little bit of bell pepper. Different mm -hmm. families like different Whatever things. Whatever you like. When I first got married, I always put onion in it. My eight-year-old would it would be mutiny okay, at my house so we leave it out at my house now so what we're going to do is we're going to add enough canola oil to the bottom of this cast iron skillet okay. which is already warm and we'll just we want to make sure that when we add this come on top get off of there when we add this thank you ma'am will it come off i yeah. always have a struggle with those things they're giving us signals that we have to go to a break. Okay. And while you're struggling with that, let me just say, <laughs> if anybody wants this lovely folder, Tasty Meals for the Family, from our good friend Rhonda Matthews in Clemson, there they're free. Just send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Peggy Denny Show, Post Office Box 1616, Greenville, South Carolina, 29602, and put the number on there number 825, 825, and we'll have it on its way to you. <sighs> We're going to a quick break and come right back. You don't want to miss all this good food. Well, welcome back to our kitchen, and Rhonda Matthews is here with me from Clemson University doing old-fashioned favorites and the salmon patties, they look wonderful. That's right. Yeah. And so you said that yeah. your family. My grandmother used to make what she calls salmon croquettes. That's and right. they were 
absolutely out of this world, and they weren't flat like that. So Cone you do, shaped. Yeah, you can do whatever makes you happy. That's right. Um, same mixture, different shape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these we actually dusted each side with a little bit of extra cornmeal, so they're going to have a little bit of extra crunch on them. I think actually that first one that we put in. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yep, it's All ready. ready to go. And you can smell just that cornmeal. A very small amount of time. That's right. And we're not just we're not deep frying these. We're just pan frying these, so you don't need to have them, you know, just swimming in oil. Um, they just need to. They need to uh, just okay. have enough to get keep them from sticking the, to the bottom of the pan. And then they go on the plate with the beets. That's exactly right. Um, while those are finishing up, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our very last dish. And I'll go ahead and pull it forward. Oh, and look at that. And that's what it is. And it won't take but a second for these to finish. Okay, you want me to watch these? Yeah, if you don't okay. mind, go ahead and pull that away. I'll take, they're almost ready. Okay. That's the nice thing about salmon is it cooks in about five or six yeah. minutes. A uh, little, you know, just a couple minutes on each side and it's done. All right. So now, on the table very fast. I will put these. You, that's right. The put them right on there. Are you sure? Let's get a couple of those big ones sitting right next to our beets and then we'll start on our All next, right. our next dish. Look Beautiful. Very nice. That little one that I made. What are you going to do with that? Well, the reason I made that, you can put it right here. My grandmother always made a little one, and she would say, that one's for the baby. See, the tradition. <laughs> that one's for the baby. You remember. I know, right. and this is actually one yeah. of those dishes that everybody remembers. Even mo Either mama made it or grandma made it. Now, okay. I have a lot of folks say, I hate taking the bones out of it, Rhonda. I don't like cleaning that salmon. They make the boneless skinless. Okay. Life gets real easy if you find you that sitting a little on the more shelf. If that's what you want. Mm -hmm. that, you know. Things get okay. real easy. The next now, thing we're going to do. This is. These are the colorful mixed greens. And it's the time of year we can rejoice and and just have these wonderful uh, vegetables. And that's exactly right. This is the right. perfect time of year. You're right. Okay. Um, and these are absolutely, all these greens are very coming hot. into season. I know. This is, I cook in this pan in particular more than anything else. That's your old fashioned yeah. um, my, uh, iron skillet, right? My, yeah, that's my go-to. That, okay. that one sits on top of my stove. It never hardly gets put away. Okay, um, now what do we have here? We're going to cook this beautiful, absolutely oh, beautiful. Oh, and they've been washed. Uh, yeah, I've washed them really well. This beautiful rainbow chard. Now, chard is very oh, similar to mustard that's gorgeous. greens. gorgeous. It is. Very nice. Oh, we're I gonna, turned it off. I'm uh, sorry. I'll forgive you. Okay. <laughs> so we're just going to take off these very tough ends, not the whole end, because you want that color in there. And I've already rinsed this, but we're going to get a good bit in there. I love to get the, um, the stems in there. Chop those stems fairly fine, and then once we get those in, okay, and that goes a little bit of color. We'll give this just a little bit of oil to keep it from sticking. Okay, there we go. There we go. And then we're going to start chopping these greens very finely. We want them actually at a shred. And there again, this is very simple. It is. And these cook up fairly fast. The stems take a little longer, so that's why we wanted them. We wanted them. Look how pretty that is on mm. that color. Very nice. So in the interest of time, we'll put this much in the pan to start with. And we'll get that going. So there we go. The other things we're going to add to this pan are going to be about a half of an onion. So we'll peel him, and off that goes. You just want to chop it. Yeah, you want it fairly thin. You don't want to bite into a big chunk. You want him to cook fast. And this will, it'll all start cooking up very quickly. So in that goes. And then we're going to use about, now this is a very small head of cabbage. Get through 
there, old boy. Very finely shredded, and I've already washed him and pulled off the outer leaves, but we're gonna give him a nice little fine shred too. We're gonna pull that okay. heat right back yeah. up. Do you use this for some, may I? Absolutely. Stir this around a little bit. Okay. And we'll sprinkle that in to mm. go with it. There we go. All right. There we go. And you just want that to yeah. si simmer. That's right. And I can see the steam coming up now. I can hear the sizzle And you coming. didn't use much oil, which no. is good. Yeah. Now, if you're not a fan of the canola, you know, it's whatever oil that you and your family want. What about so olive oil? Oil up, go for it. If you decide you don't want any of the oils and it's butter that's your thing, then so be it. My big thing is get those colorful vegetables on the table, you know, get those kids eating vegetables, get them eating those fruits and get it going. Um, I, I know that there's lots of different opinions, a lot of different opinions out there, but holy smoke, if you can get those healthy fish, those healthy vegetables, yeah. those healthy fruit on the table, and we're just gonna give it the tiniest bit of salt, not enough to just a little bit of sprinkle, and it's gonna pull a tiny bit of moisture out of there, and then it's gonna keep going. And if you were doing this at home where you had more time, you'd put more cabbage in there. You could easily yeah. do it. Now, I've got three folks in my family, two adults and a child, so this is gracious plenty for the folks at my table. Just keep chopping and adding depending on how many how folks many you're going to feed. That's food. right. Yeah. So, if that is colorful, and if, I mean, it's just loaded with nutrition. That's right. So, and, well, I'm determined I'm going to throw half of it over the side of the pot. But stop when you get to the point of, you know, it being as tender crisp or as wilted as you want it to be. So, basically, I look for the cabbage to be completely wilted, and then once it's done... Then you know it's ready. I'm ready to eat. And so, if I were making this meal at home, what I would do is as soon as I came in from work, I would get those beets ready put them in the oven and I would walk away till about 20 minutes before it was time to sit down at the table and then I would start working on the other foods because they come together so quickly. But you can see we started out with a fairly full pan and this is cooked down so much already. Now these, if you want to talk about some nutrition, full of fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, I mean all that nutrition right here in this wonderfully colorful pan And with drinks. the salmon you have protein. That's right, and the good fats, and, and, and then those wonderfully fibrous vitamin A loaded beets. So it's hard to go wrong with a meal like this. And this is tasty food, tasty meals for the family. That's right. There's something in there, and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a lovely folder, it really is. And you can do your own, if you have a tradition of salmon patties that you've grown up with, you can change it a little bit or you can keep it just the way Rhonda presented That's it. That's right. Us. And, you know, a lot of folks will um, use a leftover potato or mashed potatoes and add in there to bind that fish together. Um, That's so beautiful. whatever works for you. That is absolutely lovely. Let's go ahead and Rhonda, add that you on have our outdone plate. yourself. Well, this is my kind of food. It's, it's well, that. it's just country oh, food for country folks and plain folks, and there's nothing wrong with that. And oh. if you're growing your garden at home, there's nothing expensive about this. I'm gonna it put this, cost you I'm gonna put this down here because it's so pretty. Now, there's one more recipe that folks will get right. if they ask for the pamphlet, okay. and okay. that's for an apple recipe. So I guess which, that would be your dessert. Yeah, which we don't have. Apple surprise. They're yeah. all in here. They're free. And if you want these, it would help us if you send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Peggy Denny Show, Post Office Box 1616, Greenville, South Carolina, 29602. And the number we need from you is 825, easy to remember, 825, and we'll have it on its way. You just do a super job. Thank you, th This is a delight. Thanks. And it's something we can all use. It's a time of year yep. that we need to invest in this. You bet. Yeah. And you're investing in good health as well. Rhonda, will you come back? You know I will. Thank you very <laughs> much. Rhonda Matthews from Clemson University. One busy 
talented lady. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Wherever you are, stay healthy, eat well, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.